Okay, so we've sort of mentioned um, throughout class about these five function families, and we've kind of identified them a little bit here and there, but now we really need to get to know them. So we're going to put the date here, and then title your notes, five function families. And I just want to make sure that you remember that all these, because it's a function, all these types of graphs we're talking about pass the vertical line test, or don't have any of their x values that repeat. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at the first type of graph. I would draw yourself a little sample of this in your notes. And this is something I'm pretty sure everyone knows, but this is the linear function. Okay. And the uh, equation we use for linear function is usually slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b, or sometimes we have standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. And we'll get more involved in that a little later. <clears throat> the second graph here is called, and we've talked about this in class as well, is called a piecewise graph. And we said, I remember that because it's in different pieces okay so this and it's going to be pieces of, of lines a piecewise graph is always sections of lines so therefore the equation it depends on how many pieces there are to this graph so if I look at this section of it I can tell that the slope is up one two three four five and over three and it has a y-intercept of 0. So this one is going to be, um, what did I say, up 5 over 3? 5 thirds x, and you can put plus 0 or just leave it there. Okay. Then this is a horizontal line at the 5 on the y-axis. So its equation is just y equals 5, or f of x equals 5. Hope you remember from last year, f of x is the same thing as, <clears throat> as y. Okay? And then when we look at this piece right here, that's, <coughs> excuse me, the same thing as this one right here. It's going to rise 5 and run 3. Okay? So my equations for this, oops, I screwed that up, sorry. Normally we do a little squiggly line, and then we have 5 thirds x, and then, then we had f of x equals 5. That was my horizontal line. And then this one um, keeps going up, and I believe it's this on the same incline as this, but the y-intercept is going to be somewhere down below. We're going to kind of get to how you find that out. A little bit later um, but doing some <coughs> excuse me calculations ahead of time I know the slope is 5 thirds X and it intersects the Y axis at negative 8 so basically because there's three pieces uh, a piecewise graph will have three equations for each part so this part was Y equals 5 thirds X where you could put plus 0 intercepts at Y 0 this one, this piece right here is y equals 5. And then this piece right here was y equals 5 thirds x minus 8. Or you'll just see them all sort of um, put together as 1 with the f of x or the y equals out here and then the 3 lined up. Okay, So these will change depending on whatever the graph is. And depending how many pieces are, that's how many, piece, how many equations you'll have. Okay. All right, going down a little bit here. We talked about this uh, earlier today. When you have a swoop, we'll call it, that's called an exponential graph or exponential function, function FCN, right? Um, and the standard equation for that is y equals a times b to the x power. And it makes sense. There's an exponent in this, therefore it's an exponential function. And um, we're going to talk more detail in class how you pick out which one goes with what the type of property is. 
but this one is an increasing one, and then we've seen some decreasing ones as well. Okay, This one we talked about briefly, and this one's called an absolute value function. And um, I don't know, a little side note, if you remember what absolute value is, if you have like negative 5, the absolute value is 5. If you had the absolute value of 10, the answer would be 10. So it's the positive of whatever's in there. And really what you're doing with absolute value is you're looking at a number line. Here's your 0. And there's negative 5. The reason it becomes positive 5 is because really you're just looking for how far away it is from 0. So negative 5 is 5 places away from 0. The distance is, is 5 away. So the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. The absolute value of 10 is 10. If we put this is 10, it's 10 places away from 0. So absolute value is really telling you the distance you are away from something and not taking into account whether it's negative or positive. And um, the equation for absolute value is just the absolute value of x. Okay. And the last one we've sort of identified a few times in, in class. This is the parabola, but it's called a quadratic function. And we are going to get really familiar with this later on. And the equation for a quadratic function is ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, we're, I'm not going to focus too much on these equations. I want you to be able to recognize them. If you see something in this type of form, like if you saw something that had x squared plus 3x plus 5, you should recognize that's quadratic and it'll make, an, make a parabola. Okay? So make sure you have a, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of good notes on these five function families. And then we're going to test your knowledge on those real quick. So you might want to look at your notes. So your first question is here, number one, what kind of graph that is, and you have your answer choices there. Two, what kind of function family is that? Three, four, five, and six. What kind of function family would you put that dog in? The creeper and I say goodnight.